Hi everyone and welcome to Anti Motor Awesome. Today we will be starting a new series of videos called Good Reads for Good Readers. Now, since today is Saturday and I'm a Sunday dentist, we will start with two books pertaining to a more religious side of things. But don't worry, these books can be read at any time and will still feel the same impact. The two books we'll be reviewing today are Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom and National Sunday Law, A Shocking Glimpse Behind the Scenes by A. Jan Marcusen. Now, of course, just by looking at the covers, you can see that this one is practically older. And this one is also old, but rare, because look at the cover. It's just these simple line bar diagram stuff with a pink line in the back. That just spells old, but not so old. And it's rare. That's why it doesn't have a fancy cover. Plus, it's not meant to just attract people like that, you know. This is for hardcore readers who actually want to learn something reading. Okay, now. This has something on the back, and this doesn't have a back. Oh, I'm sorry. This book was made in 1970, published in 1970 by Judy Bloom and Adele Yearling Book. It's 295 in the U.S., 395 in Canada. Let's jump right in here with no time. When I got this book, it was in pieces. I had to paste the whole thing together. Some other yearling books here. By Judy Bloom, of course. Iggy's House. Wait, well, most of them are from Judy Bloom. Iggy's House. Then again, maybe I won't. Blubber. Otherwise known as Sheila. Tales of a Ford Grid. Nothing. Super Fudge. Freckle Juice. The one in the middle is Dream Kangaroo. When the boys run the house, the gift of the pirate queen. Now, more about this book, as you can see, in 1970. Ah, uh, that's nice. She dedicated the book to her mother. Now, a quick thing about this book. Of course, you can see there are no... Wait a minute. The first chapter... The first chapter is only three pages. Eh, good for the short readers. Yeah. Uh, it has no pictures, but it leaves everything to your imagination. So, yeah, you know, it's good for those readers who like to use their imagination. And I really think this could make a great plot for a movie. You see? It's about Margaret and her family moving to this new community and her getting used to her new life with her friends and school and fitting in and knowing all these people and stuff. But she also wants to find a religion because her father is Jewish, I think, and her mother is a Catholic or something. But she believes in God, but it doesn't make her Christian, of course. And, uh, after a while, once you get into the book, as we end the stuff, you'll see these messages, starting with, Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. And then she talks to God in the dead time, and she's in her bed. And there are some really great messages and really great conflicts in this book. There are about three conflicts, three main conflicts, so you'll have to choose on which one is greater than the other. But of course, like any book that isn't a horror, thriller, or drama, every, well, this is drama anyway, a horror or thriller, it has a good ending. It's the journey that counts for us all. Now, I give this book a five stars, since it doesn't use any complicated language, com complicated 
wordplay or anything like those books that try to make that try to make you think that it's smart using all this massive wordplay. It's only 149 pages long. I'm missing one page, but I have found that page. You know, and uh, yeah, it has a really great story about a really good person who is still unfortunately at the end searching. So yeah, it's a great five star book. I give it five stars. Now, next we have National Sunday Law. Forces unite amid stupendous crisis. A shocking glimpse behind the scenes of National Sunday Law. Now, oh yeah, I forgot something. Sorry, just a sec. I will not be editing this. This is not a mojo. Watch mojo, that's why it's anti-mojo awesome. You may have heard of this book because it's no notorious, actually, for being sort of controversial, but not so controversial. I think, I'm pretty sure it's been banned in schools or something. That's why my, my grandmother had this. And uh, you may remember it from a reference of it in the Deadpool movie, where he just randomly spouts, Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Now, this made me laugh because I knew the book and it's 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 one of those messages where only where only people who know about it would get it. Anyway back to National Sunday Law. Now I have only gotten a little way into this book because, you know, I just started reading it and stuff. It only has ninety four pages. Now, as you can see, it's very simple, which means it's very controversial and stuff, and not a lot of people are supposed to read it, but for your own sake, if you ever, ever see this book, read it immediately. There are very important messages in here, set up by Age and Marcusen, and on the back you'll see, a stupendous crisis awaits us. The book you have in your hand takes you behind the scenes and explores the shocking who, how, and when. Yep, getting real controversial here with that Illuminati 66 stuff. Now, I'm pretty sure everything in this book is true. It you know, was given to us by our uncle. I'm pretty sure we have to give it back. As I said, it's not as old as Margaret because copyright 1983. Uh, excuse me for a second. Let's see something here. 75th printing, 1999. So was this printed in 1999 or 1980? I don't know. Let me see. 17.9 million in print. This, so, this book is rare? Oh my goodness. I thought it was rare. I, I, I was really counting on it being rare. But I guess it's not as rare as I thought it was. 17.9 million. In print. But, of course, this was way back since 1980. So, you know, it must not... I'm pretty sure, like, the Sunday people probably burnt, like, half of that already. Anyway, I've only gotten to, like, the third chapter. I'm pretty much at the third chapter, page 20-something. But, as long as you can read through and get through the first chapter, because, as you may know, in these sort of... Religious controversial books. The f their first chapters are all about getting you into the mood to actually read the rest of the book. The first chapter is practically a prologue, kind of like a tutorial of what's to come, like in a video game. And it's also one of those books that tries to shock you with the titles of the chapters. The Two Horned Beasts, that's the first chapter. And I also love the pictures in the middle here. 
you probably can't read this. This is kind of like what they use back then to tell time and stuff. But it says right here around the circle, it's later than you think. That's practically a message telling you it's like you don't have that much time left. That's pretty cool. Uh, after the beast to identify, and we get to the end of that chapter. Um, come on, yes, here we go. Now, these are kind of, kind of simple, but more artistic in a sense, because they use these, like, kind of wavy, wavy backgrounds, which shows an unfinished picture, like what they used to do in those old movie posters for, like, for pre-1980s movies. And the back is a calendar. Everything pertains to time here. And for all those controversial people out there, they fix it. Yeah, read that book to find out more about that. Anyway. As you can see, there's probably this, yeah, this is a Bible right here. And here's the hourglass. They're just practically saying our time is almost up. This is very, very true. You must, must read this book. I'll give it a 4 out of 5 because it's really hard to sit through the first chapter. And to have a 5 out of 5, it needs to get everything to the T. Everything perfect. But not a lot of folks have that. Especially this one. So as long as you can get past the first chapter and stuff. And you don't even need to really know the Bible to read this book. It just kind of all just comes to you, sort of, in a sense. And plus, the Bible verses here are provided. It, it doesn't say like to like to get more... Like to understand what we're seeing here, you need to go and read Daniel chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, or something like that. Yeah, it's a really great book. Okay, we have here we have the bibliography, in other words, where they got the information and stuff. Appendix 10. Oh! So, this is what they mean by appendixes. I never checked what an appendix was. But now I know. Anyway, these are two great books, and this has brought us to the end of the first episode of Good Reads for Good Readers. This is Mojo Awesome, and I'll see you all next time on the next video.